In this lesson, I'll be covering the layer mask menu options and also showing you how to convert layer masks to selections and vice versa. So starting off, I've got an image of a flower and I'm going to go ahead and create a curves adjustment layer and pull the middle of that slider down, click OK, and I'm going to apply a radial gradient to this layer mask where the flower is here and just sort of highlight the flower just like that. Now what I'm going to do is right click on the layer mask and this brings up the layer mask menu and you can see there's several options here the first one being disable layer mask. Now I think that's pretty self-explanatory but I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, click on it and you can see now I've got a big red X on my layer mask and it basically just disables it um, and so now the entire curves adjustment is revealed so I'm going to right click again and click enable and that enables my layer mask and now I'm back where I was okay the next menu option is delete layer mask and once again I think that's fairly self-explanatory I'm gonna go ahead and click it and the layer mask is deleted I'm gonna undo that the next menu item is apply layer mask and you'll notice that it's grayed out and that's because you can't apply a layer mask to an adjustment layer you have to do that with a regular layer and I'll show you that in just a few minutes now the next three menu options have to do with selections but before I show you that if you simply want to convert a layer mask into a selection all you have to do is hold down the control or command key while clicking on the layer mask thumbnail and it will convert the layer mask into a selection so taking a look at what is actually selected here anything that was revealed on the layer is selected and anything that was hidden or masked on the layer is not selected so in this case, because the flower was masked, it is actually not selected. So everything around it is selected. Uh, however, since it was a gradient fill, uh, the selection is going to be very feathered. And we can see that if I create a new layer and just fill this layer with, uh, let's fill it with black. And we'll deselect it. And you can see that that, uh, that selection there is quite feathered. Okay, let's go ahead and delete this layer and I want to show you another use for selections and that is to copy a layer mask so I'm gonna hold down the control or command key once again while clicking on this layer mask thumbnail and you can see it creates the selection now I'm going to create a, um, a new adjustment layer and this time I'm gonna create a hue saturation adjustment and I'm just gonna pull the saturation back to let's just say negative 100 okay now you can see when I create that hue saturation adjustment it automatically created the layer mask with the selection applied so it basically copied the mask on the curves adjustment layer okay I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer here and now I want to show you how this works on a regular layer I'm going to duplicate my background layer and once again I'm going to convert this layer mask into a selection and click on my duplicated background and then I'm just going to click on the layer mask icon and as you can see it creates a layer mask with the selection applied so again just a simple way to copy a layer mask by converting it to a selection and then creating a layer mask while it's selected okay I'm gonna go ahead and delete this layer since I don't need it anymore now another thing you can do is create layer masks based on your own custom selections so to show you an example of that I'm gonna hide this curves adjustment layer and then I'm going to choose the text tool and I'm just going to create some text on top of the background here move it right there and I'm going to select the text by right clicking on the text thumbnail and clicking on select layer transparency now because I want this text to be masked out when I create the layer mask I don't want it selected so what I can do is come up to my select menu and choose inverse now everything but the text is selected and at this point I can actually delete this layer and I still have the selection now I'm going to create a new adjustment layer this time I'm going to create a brightness contrast adjustment and I'm going to pull the brightness up and bring the contrast down so you can really see the effect there as you can see when I created the adjustment layer a layer mask was automatically created based on the selection that I had in this case it was the text so definitely a very powerful tool there uh, something fun to experiment with too now I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer and make my curves adjustment visible once again now coming back to the layer mask menu 
The first option, Add Layer Mask to Selection, works the same way as holding down the Control or Command key while clicking on the Layer Mask thumbnail. However, if you already have something selected, it will add to that selection. For instance, if I simply click on it here, it creates a selection based on the layer mask uh, because I didn't have anything else selected. However, if I already had a selection, and let's go ahead and create one here with the rectangular marquee tool. I'm just going to select half of this flower, and I come to the layer mask menu, and I select add layer mask to selection. It creates a selection based on the layer mask and then adds it to what I already had selected, in this case, this half of the flower. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and deselect that. Now I'm going to create another selection with the rectangular marquee tool. It's a long rectangle down the middle of the flower. And I'm going to choose the next menu option, which is subtract layer mask from selection. So what that did is it created a selection based on this layer mask and then subtracted it from my existing rectangular selection. Now I'm going to go ahead and deselect this again and create a new selection. And now I'm going to use the next menu option which is the intersect layer mask with selection. And what this does is it creates a selection based on the intersection between the layer mask selection and our existing selection. So basically anywhere the two selections overlap it keeps and everything else it gets rid of. So what I have here is the top of this rectangle is selected and the bottom of this rectangle is selected. And that's because that's where the two different selections overlapped. Well that's just about it for the selection options. So what I'd like to do now is talk more about this apply layer mask option that's grayed out on our curves adjustment and what I'm going to do is duplicate the background layer and I'm going to set the curves adjustment so that it applies only to the uh, background copy and if you'll remember we do that by holding down the alt or option key and clicking on the line between the adjustment layer and the layer you want to apply it to so I'm going to do that now what I want to do is create a layer mask on the background copy and use it instead of the layer mask on the curves adjustment so I'm just going to right click on this layer mask and select delete and now I'm going to create a layer mask on the background copy layer now if I right click on the layer mask thumbnail I have the apply layer mask option and I'm going to show you why we want to use that here in just a second first of all let's go ahead and create a radial gradient over the flower so we'll just kind of duplicate what we had before with the curves adjustment now what I'd like to do is use a linear gradient to mask out some of the curves adjustment here in the foreground. And to do that, I simply choose a linear gradient tool. And down here in the lower left hand corner, I'm going to click and drag up uh, past the middle, right about there. And as you can see, uh, the foreground is now brighter. And if I look at my layer mask, uh, you can see what that looks like with that linear gradient. However, the radial gradient has disappeared. This is because when I create a gradient fill on a layer mask, it wipes out any previous gradient or edit. So what I need is a way to create multiple gradient fills on the layer mask. And the apply layer mask option can help me do that. Okay, I'm going to switch back to my layer view here. And you can see I've still got my linear gradient. So what I want to do now is go back and add the radial gradient over the flower. So what I'm going to do is right click on my layer mask thumbnail and select apply layer mask. Now what happens is the layer mask disappears and it actually punches a hole in the layer itself uh, in accordance with the mask. In other words, Photoshop used the layer mask as a template to cut a hole in the layer. So what I can do now is choose my radial gradient and go ahead and create a new layer mask and then run the radial gradient on the new layer mask. So what I've done in effect is apply two gradient fills to this layer. Now I don't have to apply this layer mask, I can leave it as is unless I want to create another uh, gradient fill, in which case I would simply apply this layer mask, then create a new one, and then run the gradient fill on the new mask. And with that, we've come to the end of this video tutorial. Uh, feel free to contact me if you have any questions or comments, and I hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot, and we'll see you next time.